So here we are. We have the symmetry operations of the equilateral triangle. But are we missing one? Is there one, perhaps, that, that we didn't think of that's just under our noses? Pardon? The zero. Do nothing. What if we do nothing? We sort of already did do nothing when we did 360. In other words, a rotation through 360 is the same as doing nothing. And we ought to count that, because it's, it helped us to figure out that, that 480 and 120 are the same thing. So let's, let's do that. And so now you see we've counted all of the inequivalent transformations we can do to map an equilateral triangle into itself. And you ought to know by now that this is the end. Because how many vertices do we have? We have three. And how many possible permutations are there of three objects? Three factorial. That's six. There can't be any more arrangements of the vertices. So the number of symmetry operations equals the number of permutations. It can't exceed that. How many symmetry operations will there be for a square? No. 4 factorial is 24, but the number of symmetry operations is actually fewer. Can I borrow a piece of paper? See, I told you the equilateral triangle was the, what was the simplest case. And it's simple in the sense that the number of symmetry operations equals the number of permutations. Now I make a square, and I'll label A, B, C, D. And now I can rotate through 90 degrees and end up with D, A, B, C. That's a symmetry operation of the square. But if, if the symmetry operations of the squares equal the number of permutations, there should be a symmetry operation that gets me from A, B, C, D to B, A, C, D. It would interchange the upper two vertices, but not the lower two. And to do that, I've got to do this, which is not a symmetry operation. And I'll let you do the homework problem of figuring out the number of symmetry operations of the square. And what you'll find is 8. And the reason is that you can't count relative flip-flops of these guys to these guys or these guys to these guys. You're dividing by 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8. Okay. Well, that's an easy problem. So go work it out for the cube. Count the number of symmetry operations for the cube. And when you're done with that, do the four-dimensional hypercube. So here's a square. Here's a cube. You can draw that. You should be able to look at it and count the number of symmetry operations. But now I want you to do the four-dimensional hypercube. So here's the four-dimensional hypercube. You need a fourth dimension. So you just draw one. I mean, I'm on a two-dimensional blackboard, so I can always draw a fourth dimension if I can draw a third dimension. So there's the four-dimensional hypercube. How many symmetry operations does it have? You begin to see what mathematicians are trying to do. They want to know the answer to questions like that. They want to understand nature. Now I've lost my little pointer. What did I, what did I do with it? A little controller. Where did I put it? Oh, here, oh, here it is. OK, good. Let's see right here. All right, this, so far you're not astonished by this. This is just a kind of tedious little exercise, but you know, we learned something from it. And we, we looked at this issue of you know, equivalence. Rotation through minus 120, you might have worried about that's equivalent to 240. 480 is equivalent to 120. In fact, any rotation about x is equivalent to x plus 360. All seems pretty straightforward. How do we know we got them all? And this was a deep question that got solved in the 19th century by a really remarkable character named Galois, Everest Galois. And to, to imagine what Galois was like, think of the famous movie Amadeus with Tom Hulse playing Mozart, this brash, arrogant character who, who insulted kings and so forth. And that was, uh, was Everest Galois. But Everest Galois was 100 times worse than Mozart, and in fact got himself in serious trouble with the French crown in around 1816 or so. And uh, he ended up, I, the, the, the apocryphal story is that the, 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 the uh, authorities in France wanted to get rid of him. So they arranged a situation in which he had a romantic entanglement with a woman who was married. She happened to be married to the best marksman in France. 
the marksman found out about this, was deeply offended and challenged Galois to a duel. And Galois really had no choice. And the night before, he stayed up. Rather than practicing shooting a gun, he, he, uh, he wrote down all of his ideas on symmetry. And he arrived the next morning in the field of honor and was taken out immediately by one shot. Actually, he, it was a horrible death. It took a few days. People have argued that, that that story I just told is a little romantic and really probably not the case. And it's probably more sordid and ugly than what I told you. But this guy was a genius. And he, he answered the, qu the question, how do you know you have them all, by inventing an entirely new branch of mathematics. And what he considered was combining operations. Very simple idea. What if I've done a rotation through 240, and I don't hit the reset button, keep the triangle where it is, and now I do a reflection of that axis one. What do I get? So we do our ABC rotation through 240. A goes all the way over to here, so forth. Now, remember where axis one was. It cuts through B at this point. So now I do a reflection about 1. B stays put, but C and A are interchanged. So ABC ends up as BAC after doing a rotation through 240, followed by a reflection about 1, without hitting the reset button. And if we went to our table, and we look it up, we'll see that the, for a reflection about axis 2, we'll get BAC. And that's what we got. We got BAC. Therefore, we've solved the equation. Ro ro rotation through 240 times reflection about 1 gives me a, a reflection about 2. So now it's not hard for the simple equilateral triangle to work out the multiplication table. So here it is. It's like one of those highway mileage maps. Ah, oh, but there's a really big difference between this and a highway mileage map. So what have we got here? We've got the first operation we do, called A, say a rota rotation through 120. We follow it by another one, let's say a reflection about 2, and we get a reflection about 1. Trust me, you can go home and check it. That's what you get. A times B equals C. So if you want to go from Chicago to St. Louis, you look up in the map the distance, and you get, what, 300 miles or something, like the highway mileage map. But this is totally different than a highway mileage map. What's the distance from St. Louis to Chicago? It's the same as the distance from Chicago to St. Louis, I think. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Well, we just did a rotation through 120 followed by a reflection about 2, and we got a reflection about 1. That's St. Louis, Chicago to St. Louis gives that. Let's do them in the opposite order. St. Louis to Chicago gives a reflection about 3. A times B does not equal B times A. Okay. Isn't that ridiculous? Here we did it. Rotation through 240 times reflection about 2 equals reflection about 3. If I do them in the opposite order, reflection about 2 times 240 gives me the opposite, gives me a different answer. 